don't be in the same place a year from now that you are right now unless you absolutely freaking love where you are right now. Make yeah. that change. Life right. is too short. This is not a dress rehearsal. And that passion makes people want to work with you, but you got but that starts with loving it. So so again, love it, learn to love it or go do something else, but the bottom line is go do it, okay? Don't right. be in the same place you are a year from now. Welcome everyone to the Road Less Traveled Show. This is a show about people that were successful in a previous career that left that career to go down a different path. I'm your co-host, Richard Coyne. And I'm your co-host, Bill Zaylor. On today's show, we're honored to have Rod Cleef with us as our guest. So welcome, Rod. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. This will be a lot of fun. It's a pleasure to meet you guys. Let's, let's, let's add some value. Absolutely. Thanks, Rod, so much for being on the Road Less Traveled Show. Well, can you tell us a little bit about your, your backstory, how, what, what sure. path you started on at first and... Sure, sure, sure. Well, I'm going to go way back because it, it'll lend kind of some framework to what we'll discuss today, I think. And so I immigrated to this country um, from the Netherlands. I was born in Holland, you know, think wooden shoes, windmills, and immigrated when I was six with my brother, Albert, my mother's Vancha. And uh, we ended up in Denver, Colorado, uh, where I lived for 30 years. But when we got there, I will tell you, we really struggled. Uh, we, I remember we ate food from expired food places. We drank powdered milk with our cereal in the morning, which I can tell you is no fun. We, you know, I wore clothes from the Goodwill and the Salvation Army all the way through junior high school till I lied about my age at Burger King, got a job so I could buy clothes and ultimately buy a car. And, you know, I, I know, you know, you may have listeners that had it harder than I did or have it harder now even with all this nonsense with COVID, but, but I knew I wanted more. And luckily, my mom had an incredible work ethic. And so she babysat kids so we'd have enough money to live. And with her babysitting money, she invested. She didn't have a formal education, but we inv she invested in the stock market, made money, IPOs. But she also invested in real estate. So the first real estate, the first house she bought was directly across the street from us, from a neighbor. And uh, she, in, when I was 14, this is 1974, she paid about uh, $30,000 for that house. Three years later, she told me she'd made $20,000 in her sleep without doing anything on that house. And I'm like, what? Forget college, mom. I'm getting into real estate. So I went out and got my real estate broker's license right when I turned 18, which back then, I wasn't just an agent. I was a broker. I could have my own office, which back then you could do with education. Now they got smart. You need you know, some experience. But I was a broker. And my first year in real estate, I made about eight grand. My second year, maybe 10 grand. But my third year, I made over $100,000, which back in 1980 was some pretty decent change. So what happened between year two and year three that caused me to 10X my income? Well, what happened was I met a guy, I was actually dating his daughter, that taught me about the importance of mindset and psychology towards success in anything. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, and how really 80 to 90% of your success in anything is just that. If it was just knowledge, you know, technical knowledge, there'd be a bunch of wealthy librarians and college professors. You know, it's it's the do and it's the keep doing. It's the pushing through fear. And, you know, fast forward to today, I've owned a couple thousand houses that I rented long term. I've owned thousands of apartment units. And um, in 2006, my net worth went up $17 million while I slept. And you might be thinking, wow, that's really cool. And so did I. And I got a head so big, I could barely fit it through a door. I thought I was a real estate god. And you know, when that happens, God or the universe or whatever you believe will give you a nice little smack. Well, that was 2008. I lost uh, 17 million. I lost actually lost 50 million dollars. I lost that 17 million a lot more. I lost 50 million dollars in 2008 and nine. And so, you know, one of the things that I'm known for, you know, I've got a podcast, it's called Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate Investing, which I started to tell the story about what happened to me. Uh, so one of the things I'm known for from the podcast and being interviewed is the mindset it took to have 50 million to lose in the first place. But then as important, maybe more important is the mindset it took to recover from that to the, to the success that I have today. So um, happy to drill down on that. Uh, certainly can talk about the shift that I made. And I'll talk about it right now, actually. So, Please. you know, I started yeah. my podcast about a little over five years ago, and the whole idea was just to add value and tell people what happened to me because it was my single family that pulled me down. My multifamily did just fine. In fact, if I had just been in apartment buildings, I would have survived easily. Um, but I had cross collateralized big packages of houses with my multifamily to save, you know, 50 basis points of a half a percent interest, thinking I was brilliant. And so the whole thing collapsed. But, um, 
you know, so I, I started my podcast and I used to say, I'll never sell you anything. I just want to add value. And it was the truth at the time. Now I'm a liar. Cause I've got, you know, courses and coaching and I, you know, I hit, I hit a million downloads. I'm like, okay, knucklehead, you probably ought to do something with this. So I wrote a book and I gave away 20,000 copies of that book for free. Then I did a course and now, you know, I do sold out live events around the country. I've got one coming up in December actually, but I'll talk about that later. But anyway, so, you know, when I hit a million downloads and I, and I started getting so much feedback, you know, like I was showing you guys before the call started, I've got, you know, there's hundreds of thank you cards on the wall behind me from people whose lives have been impacted by my work. And, you know, I, I started taking, you know, when I first started it, I took free phone calls from my listeners and, and I didn't have anything to sell. I said, I'm not going to sell you anything. I just want to, you know, add value to you. And I did hundreds of those calls and I loved them so much that I realized that my calling really was to educate and to help. And, mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, and, and this is not ego, but let me tell you, you know, today I get love probably at least 10 times a day. I'll get a gift. I get these cards. I get, you know, gifts in the mail. I get, you know, uh, DMs or emails from people who's, who thank me for all the, all the effort I put into educate and help. And it's my mm -hmm. greatest gift. So I'm addicted. And I'm sure you guys get mm -hmm. some of that feedback as well. You know, even though your thing's new, I'm, you, you know, it'll build and it's just such a beautiful thing. So we want to talk about shifts. Now I'm still buying real estate. Don't get me wrong. I live, eat and breathe real estate. I love real estate. And, you know, um, you know, and the other, you know, and so, so I'm still buying it. Just like I say, we closed on a 296 unit uh, just a, a few weeks ago, closed on an 84 unit in Charlotte a few days ago. Um, you know, I bought, I don't know, somewhere around 2,500 doors, mostly with my students over the last uh, two and a half years. Um, and uh, so we're still actively very buy and buying, but I really love the education piece. And, and it's great to be able to go live again. You know, I was supposed to have 800 people in Orlando, you know, right before COVID hit. It was supposed to be May of when COVID, you know, COVID hit. I forget it's 19 or 20. 2020. 2020. Yeah. 20, so May of 20, I was supposed to have 800 people. And we all know what happened with that. So I was freaking out. I was like, what are we going right. to do? You know, we had probably three or four hundred tickets sold. And so and I didn't want to give that money back or, you know, deal with that financial burden. So, you know, we went virtual and I built a video mm -hmm. virtual video studio here at my uh, compound here. And now we've had thousands of people attend. And but it's just so awesome to be able to go live again, because, you know, when you're going virtual, right. there's a there's your poker face photographer, you got no energy coming at you. And I'm trying to teach for two or three days. It's brutal. So it's, it's anyway. So, so yeah. So the shift for me has been from, from investing and just investing to teaching and, mm -hmm. and, and I freaking love it. But you know, the other thing, I mean, this is not to, not to derail the conversation, but I've actually built 27 businesses I never call them failures. That was a $50 million seminar. Okay. I call them seminars. It's only a failure if you don't get back up or you don't get the lesson. Now, right. out of those 27 businesses I've built, several were tens of millions of dollars. Most were spectacular flaming seminars. Okay. But we fail our way to success, right? I, I, uh, you know, failure and setbacks are nothing but feedback. And in fact, I met the billionaire owner of Spanx, you know, the, uh, the, the women's undergarments, uh, it's her yeah. name, Sarah Blakely, beautiful human being started with $5,000 and now she's a billionaire, but she told me, I met her at her mastermind. And she told me that her dad used to tell her and her brother or ask them once a week, what have you failed at this week? Isn't that a great question to ask your kids so they don't it feel is. failure? And he'd be, he'd be mad at them if they didn't try something and fail. Yeah. I thought that was just an awesome message. Anyway, yeah. I'll stop talking. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we absolutely firmly believe in the concept of fail yeah. fast forward. And, yeah. and, and certainly, you know, a, a big big part of what we do is, is education, too. I mean, you know, we mm -hmm. host two, two monthly meetings. Uh, oh, I didn't do, know that. Do, awesome. Yeah, we do the podcast. And again, we're that's 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 something that's important to us. We, we, we try to give back and help others. And, you know, a lot of people were gracious with their time and answering questions, giving us some guidance when we were just getting started. So we try to do the same. So, love it. Yeah. Love yeah. it. Yeah. Well, if you ever want me to, you know, uh, speak to one of your groups, I'm happy to do that. I have an awesome goal setting workshop that I do. In fact, I'll mention that for a minute. You know, people sure. often ask me, you know, how did you recover from losing 50 million bucks? And one of the biggest pieces is reassociating with what I wanted and why I wanted it. And um, so, you know, if you come to my boot camp, for example, the first hour and a half is goal setting and it's goal setting on steroids. And and uh, because, you know, like Napoleon Hill says in his book, Think and Grow Rich, you've got to have a burning desire. You've got to really want right. it to push through fear, to push through limiting beliefs. You know, so many people have 
limiting beliefs. Like I'm not old enough. I'm not young enough. I'm not smart enough. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough time, you know, and there's a reason the acronym for belief systems is BS because 99% of them are just that. Yeah. Okay. So that, that burning desire, you, you know, how the heck are you going to get anything also if you don't know what it is with clarity? And that's why that process is so important. So learn, learn, you know, educate yourself, have that burning desire and you got, then you got to take action. That's it. Absolutely. Yep. But but yep. the but the burning desires will get you to take action, get you to get right. up early, stay up late, work Saturdays, you know, grind for a few years like most people won't. So you can live the rest of your life like most people can't. And that's right. why it starts with knowing what you want and why you want it. So you actually take action. Yeah, yep. yep. absolutely. Yep. Well, Ralph, what was that? You've kind of gone over like what, what was the emphasis for the shift? You started getting all this feedback from the giving advice and freely of your time. And it was a good feedback loop. You could tell people wanted it, needed it, and you were helpful with it. So that kind of why you're going, what was one of your first victories once you transitioned to more of the, the educational side of it? You really go, this is the right thing I'm doing. I made the right decision. Oh, listen, it, 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 it was the success of my students. Um, you know, I don't know if I told you this before we started recording or not, but my students now own somewhere, but I mean, this is just my coaching students. So forget the boot camp students. It's probably quadrupled the amount, but my coaching students now own somewhere between 46 and 47,000 units that they bought in, you know, wow. somewhere in the last three and a half to four years. And I'm incredibly proud of that. Uh, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, just today, somebody posted, they closed on 134 unit in our, in our, in our group every day, it's almost somebody closed, closes on something. We posted yesterday, the 84 unit. And so, you know, um, it's just, it's, it's a gift when you can, when you can give back and, 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 and you feel that, that, that positive, you know, reinforcement from people whose lives have been changed. And, mm -hmm. you know, I know that sounds a little self-serving because I sell boot camps and stuff, but I got to tell you, uh, you know, if once you get to know me, you'll realize that it's not about the money for me. And, uh, um, you know, I know that you guys are really big on giving back. And, and I'll share a story about that when we're ready to have that part of the conversation. Um, yeah. But it, yeah. it's clear too. I mean, Rod, that, I mean, obviously financially, you don't need to continue to teach, but you do it because you love I it. It's a passion. I don't, right. I make right. a lot more money from these apartments. Okay. But, but, but I, I, I absolutely love it, which is my, my wife puts up with me tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow, we're doing a photo shoot all day into the evening and, and video recording and everything else. And last two weeks ago, it was on a Sunday, you know, and right. that's why she puts up with me because she knows I love it. So that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Rod, you've, you've had a long career and, you know, ups and downs and, you know, is there a funny story somewhere along the way that you can share something? Oh, that God, I've got as a landlord, I've got some really funny stories. Uh, but uh, let me think about this for a second. Well, I'll just tell you some funny landlord stories. You know, when sure, you're a landlord, sure. you, you. So I'll tell you one here in Florida. I had a house. I had some houses on a canal here. I, I couldn't believe I could buy houses on canals for uh, about 125,000 a piece. And so I bought all five that were available for 150. Well, one of them uh, was on Boyle Terrace. I won't say the address publicly, but, but um, I get a call uh, in the morning and it was a direct access canal out to the Gulf, right? And I get a call and this lady says, yeah, this is so-and-so with Wink TV. Have you seen the news? I, oh no, first she said, do you own that house on so-and-so Boyle Terrace? I said, yes. She said, have you seen the news? I said, no. Well, the DEA, with night vision goggles, busted somebody um, with uh, uh, bringing in like in tonnage. It might've been like a half a ton of cocaine to this house. And they're like, and this was the time of Pablo Escobar, okay? And, right. and she's like, it was, a, and the guy said he was Colombian that rented the house, had an 800 credit score. So you know how good that is. You know, when somebody has 800 credit score, I don't need to see anything else. You got it. And yeah. and and he was a drug dealer and, uh, uh, and, and she's like, we'd like to interview you on TV, TV. And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? I'm not getting on TV. <laughs> you know, I, I got these visions of machine guns, everything else. So that was one. I'll tell you another one that's kind of funny, too. So when I, you know, I had 500 houses in Denver at one time, which I'm, you know, it, it's painful to bring that up because yeah. if I hadn't sold them to buy 1300 <laughs> houses in Florida, I'd still have those Denver houses. And I don't know if you know what's happening in Denver, but Oh, yeah. They'd be free and clear right now. And I would be net, net, netting 800,000 minimum a month right now if I'd have kept those. But anyway, woulda, coulda, shoulda. I, I wouldn't have met my wife. And, you know, that's life is about meaning, by the way, guys. And, and you can have something bad happen to you, like my $50 million seminar, and you choose the meaning you place on it. Two people could have the same, like, 
per, uh, outwardly perce uh, perceived as horrific experience. And one person comes out stronger, the other person comes out destroyed. So it's really important, you know, for those of you listening, if you had something bad happen to you, decide to put a positive meaning on it. So my meaning for that is, is I would have never met my wife and I'd give it all up again for her. So, um, but anyway, so I had this, I'm reading the paper, the Denver Post, and there's a picture of one of my houses on, on Columbine Street. And, and, and the caption was making money the old fashioned way. OK, and, and it was a five bedroom house. The guy told me he was in the maid service and he turned it into a bordello. So I called my partner in Chicago. I said, Al, we own a whorehouse in Denver. <laughs> anyway, I could keep going. But, those, you know, as a landlord, you, you see all yeah. kinds of crazy stuff, you know, Absolutely. unusual number of tenants paying in cash. I see. <laughs> right, right. Absolutely. Yeah, he had horrible credit. So I, I charged him a triple deposit, you know, and of course we had to evict him. So, I mean, I was made yeah. whole, but uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, our, I, I got a bunch of those. <laughs> our, our, our first property we bought, um, it was a 216 unit C property. And uh, as Bill and I were doing the walkthrough every, again, we walk every unit to make sure we understand right. what the condition is, et cetera. Same here. It was a little concerning when we walked in and there were, you know, three or four adult males in a dark room and it smelled a little funny. So, you know, you can kind of oh, yeah. Out, oh, figure, yeah. out oh, yeah. that, figure out what that was. And that's, like, that's, okay. oh yeah, that's, 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 yeah. Uh, that, you see that a lot. Um, yeah. You know, one of my, um, one of the, my members of my mastermind, mine, Maureen Miles um, talks about how, you know, she, she aligns with the police department wherever she buys and she buys quite a bit in Atlanta actually. Uh, and uh, she tells the story how she had bought, the Christmas dinner for a uh, for the for the police department to pay, mm -hmm. pay twenty five hundred bucks. So they love her, and she walked into this empty building and went this complex she was converting with the, her property manager. And about eight big guys came out. It's supposed to be empty, right? So she's texting onto the side, "Hey, can you guys come here?" And you could hear the sirens in the distance coming. And she said, "Like it seemed like sixty seconds. There were five police cars there." And anyway. Wow. Yeah, I love sharing, you know, hearing and talking about those stories because, but, you know, the beautiful thing about real estate is, you know, people, people have this misconception that yet you know, there's so many, so much risk and everything else. But yet, as you guys know, our business is primarily empirical. You get the numbers right. You do the due diligence. You walk the units. You, you know, you make sure you cross, you know, your T's and dot your I's. And it's pretty hard to make a, a serious mistake. I mean, right. you know, back in 2008, when the market crashed within three years, uh, of, of that crash, rents had exceeded 2006 and seven levels. I mean, what, mm -hmm. what asset class recovers like that? You know, and what, what asset class besides multifamily gets government assistance? The shopping center owners and the, and the office and the self-storage, they didn't get any help. It, you know, it was all about people not, you know, having a place to live. So we definitely have the right asset class, right? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Hands down. I yeah. mean, it's the way that the bank partners with you to help buy the place, the way that you've got, uh, you know, just appreciation over time, as well as obviously, you know, value add driving appreciation of, the, of that property. It's, it's incredible tech, possible yeah. tax advantages for you. Oh. Yeah, it's fantastic. So, I think yeah. the only well, let's hope, forward. let's hope, let's hope. I don't want to, I don't want to <laughs> upset anybody, but let's hope this current administration doesn't pass all the crap they're trying to pass because it's definitely going to hurt our, our business. You know, it just I scratch my head at some of the stupidity that's going on right now in the White House. But, you know, they're trying to mess with the 1031 exchange and capital gains to pay for this three and a half trillion dollar debacle. But anyway, sorry, I digress. It's a <laughs> something I'm very frustrated with right now. You know, understandably so. Yeah, and, and it's hard to you know plan for the future if you have no clarity on what's gonna what's gonna happen. Well, listen, I I will be honest, guys. I actually believe we are heading into a contraction. I think this feels like 2006 to me, and and, and you know it's nothing to fear. I mean, it's something just to be aware of and be ready for. I'm getting in a lot of cash right now. I'm pre-framing my investors. Listen, you know, we're getting ready. When it happens, you know, the news will say the you know, real estate's going to be terrible for 10 years. But you please, God, I hope you're not listening to anything on the news right now anyway. It's mostly baloney. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, when that happens and, 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 and hate the expression here, but there's blood running in the streets, we're going to pounce, okay? Because mm -hmm. that's when the real money is made. You know, if you listen to my podcast, I've had, you know, over 500 episodes. I think I've interviewed probably some of the largest players in, in the country. And, um, you know, I started to hear a pattern, you know, especially the guys that had a few thousand units. Many of them started in 9, 10, 11, and 12. 
That's what we call a clue, right, guys? And so, yep. you know, um, and so there'd be incredible opportunity. It's not something, uh, hopefully it won't be as bad as, as that. I, I mean, there's no question we're going to have inflation. But the beautiful thing about inflation is it doesn't just, it, 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 yes, it hurts a lot of people, but it doesn't hurt landlords because rent goes up too, right? right? right. It's, it's you know, pair right. with, uh, with inflation, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, fixed debt. So that debt Right. When, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, and that's the only one I maybe you can speak to a little bit too, Rob. The only thing um, that I heard, about, like in the, like I said, the 08 crash, people were affected multifamily. It seemed like the only ones that were, if they had like a, a loan maturing at that exact time and the credit markets were frozen. Right. So no, that's, exa- that's exactly right. Because term. honestly, yeah. multifamily only pulled back, I think, nationally around 11%. And most properties could support that and break even at 11%, you mm-hmm. know, down uh, down in revenue. Um, but yeah, if, if, you know, because the cap rates obviously, uh, uh, went up. Uh, some of the people couldn't refinance, uh, couldn't get the values to refinance. And I mean, that's a bad day. You know, when you've got a cash yeah. flowing asset that, that and the loan comes due and, and the cap rates have adjusted and you can't refinance, which is why I know you guys, you know, you do an exit cap that's higher than what you buy, just right. like any right. other prudent investor. And right now I won't do short-term bridge debt. I mean, I think it's way too risky. So, you know, the minimum I'll do is five years, ideally seven years if I'm doing right. bridge right now, just for that very reason. Cause you know, that's the definition, go look in the dictionary in a bad day. And there's a guy with a property that the cap rate went up and he's cash flowing and it's a beautiful asset and he's in, he's stuck, you know, or she's stuck. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Right. Well, Rob, where are you uh, today on your journey? You've transitioned to the boot camps, you have the mastermind, you have all that where are you now and where do you see yourself going to as you, as you expand your footprint? Yeah, listen, listen, uh, I, my focus is, is really the teaching. I mean, we're buying assets. So I've got a team, you know, we're, we're building that team and systemizing that team right now. But um, I've got, like I say, I've got my boot camp coming up December 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Um, it's mm-hmm. a three day boot camp. It's not a sales pitch. I spend maybe 30 minutes talking about my coaching over the three days. That's it. And, and let me, let me give your listeners, I'll give them a fantastic deal. So if, if you, um, Text the word multifamily to 72345 and remember to use the code Rod Friend. You can come for $197. Okay, number one. Two, you'll get my courage and confidence course, which I just finished about building your courage and confidence to actually take action. So I'm really proud of it. Um, I've also got an incredible finding deals course. And, you know, in this hot market, that's the biggest thing is finding deals. I've got a great right. course on how to do that. I include the, the PDF and the audio version of my best selling book. You know how to create lifetime cash flow multifamily properties. All that for 197 bucks, and I've got to tell you, I've never had a complaint. The only complaint I ever get is the room's too cold or the food sucked or something like that. It's never about the content, okay? And right. so, you know, and I've had thousands of people attend. In fact, if you're listening and you decide to come and you didn't love it after on Sunday on the third day, come see me. I'll give you your money back, no problem. I mean, not only just like it, loved it. Um, so, um, but uh, you know, and. I love that. I mean, we teach every aspect of the business, finding deals, building a team, due diligence, the financing, the syndication, the property management, you know, every every piece of the business. And of course, I spend a lot of time on mindsets. So you actually take action with what you learn. I mean, that's what I'm known for. And that's why my students are so successful. And 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 so, you know, I, I'm going to continue. I probably do that till the day I die, guys. I, I absolutely love it. And, and, and I'm addicted to it. And I probably can't do it at the pace that I'm doing it right now because I'm putting out content. I'm going to show you something here. Here's some of the here's some of the books I've written. You can, you, you know, you know, it's all about adding value. Right. I mean, I've got I've got mastering multifamily acquisitions. I've got a tool book with every due diligence question you can think of financing your multifamily purchase, mastering multifamily deal structure. Questions to ask when I'm forming a partnership, you know, on and on. How to hire a third-party property management company. So I'm always bringing on new material, and I've got to slow that pace down at some point. But, but um, you know, as you guys know, the the most successful people on the planet are the ones that add the most value. So I live by that adage, and it's served me really well. And that's why I don't charge a thousand dollars or whatever. Yeah. You know, I don't have a bunch of people coming in to sell people things. It's just really come to the boot camp. If you go to multifamilybootcamp.com. It's right there. And go to the bottom of that page. You'll see hundreds and hundreds of testimonials of people that came unsolicited that loved it. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. Uh, cool. I'm, I, I'm loving the training. I'm loving the teaching. I'm actively buying with my students. My students are buying like crazy. And what's not to love? You know, when, when you get all that feedback, you kind of become addicted to it, honestly. 
Rod, we'll put a we'll put notes and a link oh, thanks, that thank in, you, in thank the show you. notes. Absolutely, thank yeah, you. no, that's great offer, and it sounds like an exciting event coming up. Yeah. Rod, you mentioned something a little bit ago, um, and and again, kind of back to mindset for half a second. You know, it, failure happens, issues, bad stuff happens, but again, it's how it's you life. react and where you go from it. Are you going to become a victim, or are you going to take it as a challenge to own it? Let me speak to that. I may. It? Let me speak to that if I may. Okay. I will tell you it's human nature to connect through negativity. Okay. And, and, and guy, I know if you're, if you're listening to Richard and Bill, you're a leader, there's no question. And right now more than ever, the world needs leaders. Okay. And with all the craziness going on, but it's so important to pay attention to what you're focused on. Don't get me started on the fake news and stuff. I mean, put, bring in the good stuff on my mm-hmm. podcast. I do these clips every week called own your power. My podcast is called lifetime Cash Flow. Um, and I'm really proud of the work that we've done there. And, and every week I do these five minute clips. This week is about self-actualization, about looking in the mirror to be a better father, mother, husband, wife, you know, human being and, and, and about growing every year. So, so every week I do one like that. They're very motivational. So even if you're not interested in investing or learning about multifamily, you know, you'll really enjoy those clips because I'll juice you once a week and there's hundreds of them there. But um, you know, the reason I bring all this up is, is, we connect through negativity. Like if you came up to me and said, Hey Rod, how you doing? I'm like, Oh man, I am freaking fantastic. Life is amazing. You take a step back and say, okay, he's off his meds. Right. (laughs) But if, if, if you came up to me and that's human nature, you know, that, 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 that exuberant passionate personality can be a little putting off for some people. But if you come up to me and say, how you doing? I'm like, Oh God, my back's freaking killing me. Or, you know, I just lost a hundred grand on this deal. Oh, you know, they'll put their arm around you and say, come here, brother. I feel you. You know, I, I, you know, and we connect that way. Be careful of that. That's number one. Okay. Second thing is if you have something negative happen to you, don't let it become your identity. Okay. Some people will take that and it'll become their story or their identity. And, and I'm going to tell you, you want to be really careful of that. And I proactively seek out other identities. So like on my wall here, I've got statements. I am statements that say I am success. I am the best in the world at what I do. I'm a business genius. I've got them in my exercise facility. And there's no greater force in the human psyche than the need to remain consistent with how we identify ourselves. So anything you put the words I am in front of is an identity statement. And so, you know, like, you know, I'll, I'll, if I'm having a little stress, which is the achievers word for fear, um, if I'm having a little stress, you know, I'll sometimes yell and I've got here another one. I am health and energy. I am courage. I'm determination. I am um, focus. And I'll, I'll run down the street and yell that stuff. I am determination or I am courage. And it's kind of funny. My, my kids help me at my live events and uh, one does audio and the other was video. And the most common question they get is, does he really do that shit? Does he really want run around? And they're like, yes, yes, we grew up with that. But, you know, and I'm sure I lost some of you analytical ones, but I'm here to tell you that's how I had 50 million to lose. Okay. And that's how I got back yeah. to where I'm at today. So, you yeah. know, please, please don't, you know, uh, uh, poo poo it because it, it works. And, and, you know, the goal setting works, the visualization works, all this stuff. You know, I've got vision boards here next to my desk, uh, you know, things that I want now. And, mm-hmm. and that stuff, that's how you get this stuff. The mechanical stuff, if you want it bad enough, you'll figure it out and you'll make it work. Right. But again, identity is really important. Be careful that you don't have something negative become your story. You know, make sure you're around the right group of people that, that will empower you and build you and lift you up and hold you accountable. You know, most people will default to people they went to school with or they work with. And those people might be afraid of your desire for success. They might be jealous of your desire for success. They might be fearful of losing you. And sometimes those people are family. So be careful, choose your family, or I'm sorry, love your family, but choose your peers, right. who you allow to influence you, right? And so, you know, get around, I, I created a, a mastermind of some of the top real estate investors in the country, it's about 14 billion in assets in there, just because I want to be around people that think what I think is hard is easy. You know, that's mm-hmm. the group you want to be in. You want to be, you know, if you're going to play tennis, you want to play somebody better than you or somebody worse than you. Right. right. So, so, right. so I, I created that group for me more than anything else. And it just turned into something pretty magnificent, but get around people that want more out of life because that's a rising tide lifts all ships. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Rod, is there something that you do to, you know, perhaps give back and oh, let me help, tell you a story. Yep, 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 yeah. yep. Let me, let me tell you a story. So, 
I lived in Denver, but I knew I always wanted to live in the beach. Okay. So I would visualize palm trees and beach and surf and sand. And 20 years later, I built this $8 million, 10,000 square foot mansion on the beach. I had the beach on one side. I had my boats on the backside, which was almost the unthinkable when I was 18. I talk about this in the goal setting because, you know, it's, it's, it's important to think big. Um, and I worked for this thing for 20 years. Okay. Two months after I moved in, 20 years, two months after I moved in, I'm floating in this pool at night. I'm looking up at this testament to my ego, which is really what it was. It was to prove the world I was good enough. You know, I, I went through some experiences getting thrown into school, not speaking English, getting beat up at school, being humiliated on a playground. And I, I came up with this disempowering belief that I wasn't good enough. And so I used to ask myself, how can I show them I'm good enough? And it was really, it was very emotional for me when I figured that out at a Tony Robbins event that I, I looked, really looked in the mirror and I figured out that's what it was that I've been asking myself. And, you know, I actually cried for about 30 minutes. It was like, oh, Holy shit, that, that has had such a huge impact on my life. Well, anyway, I'm floating in the pool at night. Two months after I built this thing, I worked 20 years for, and I got depressed. And I don't mean just a little depressed. I mean, I got really depressed. I'm like, what the hell? I mean, I had the Maserati in the garage. I had the Mercedes. I had the boats, the toys, beautiful family inside sleeping. And I achieved success like times a thousand. How could I be depressed? Well, there were several things going on, guys. And, and one is... It's never about the goal. You need the goals to push you and propel you. But, you know, they say the happiest days of a boat owner's life, the day they buy the boat, the day they sell the boat, right? It's the same yeah. thing with any goal. You know, you need them, but it's about who you become on your path to the goals that's important. Happiness comes from progress and growth, okay? So it's important to remember that. And I didn't know what I was going to do next. You know, you need a vision for the future as well. So if you're about to achieve a big goal, make sure you have other goals lined up behind it. So you still right. have that push, you know, uh, like the good book says, without a vision, the people perish. And I didn't know what I was going to do next. And I didn't know how I was going to continue to grow or progress. But here's the big thing. I'd been totally focused on me. Rod, 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 show the world I matter, show the world I'm good enough. And so, uh, you know, I, I figured, you know, I got to get back. So I went out and bought some books. I got Napoleon Hill, Dale Carnegie, Zig Ziglar at the time, Tony Robbins. And I started reading Tony's book. I'm like, man, this is good. So, and, and by the way, shout out, if you ever can see him live, just do it. Trust me, you'll thank me. I followed him around the planet for about 20 years and it's impacted every area of my life positively. But um, anyway, I went and saw him live. This is 21 years ago. And I found out that he fed families for the holidays. I'm like, what a concept. Do something for someone else someday. I'm like, mm -hmm. I had to be 40 to get that freaking memo. So I went back and I, I was, I was going to go to, to um, uh, Denver for Thanksgiving. I was already here in Florida. I'm like, and so I called my brother, Ed. I said, hey, buddy, let's, let's, see, let's feed five families this year. So he called his church and, he, and, and asked them who really needs help. And we got five families. The third family changed my life, guys. So this woman lived there with, in, a, in a crappy one bedroom, wasn't even a one bedroom with five kids. And we bought toys for the kids. We got a frozen turkey. We got, you know, food, a big thing of food. And she comes out, the woman comes out, she sees this on the porch and she starts crying. And then her kids come out, the older ones start crying. And then I start crying and I'm freaking hooked. And I'm blessed to say, guys, in the last 21 years, I've fed over 100,000 children here in the Sarasota and Bradenton area. Um, we've done, ten, and I'm not, please know I'm not bragging about this. There's a punchline on this that I want to, mm -hmm. this is an important lesson here. Um, so please know I'm not bragging. Don't get turned off by the, by the magnitude of this. Um, I've done tens of thousands of backpacks filled with school supplies. It's astounding to me living the greatest freaking country on earth and kids don't even have supplies for school. Um, you know, uh, I've done tens of thousands of teddy bears given to local police departments for their officers to keep in a vehicle. If they encounter a child that's been traumatized for whatever reason, they can give her, give them a bear. And and, and see, I had been, I was successful, but I was unfulfilled. Tony Robbins calls it the science of achievement versus the art of fulfillment. And fulfillment really is an art. See, we've been taught to achieve, to be happy. You can't be happy till you achieve something, right? You, ha you have to achieve to be happy. No, when you're giving back in any fashion, you're happily achieving. Mm -hmm. OK, it's a play on words, but it's an important play on words. And so here, if you're listening and you're thinking, yeah, well, that's all sounds real good. I'll do it when I have money. No big mistake. Do it right now. I don't you know. Pick a cause that you're passionate about. Children, the elderly, the environment, animals, whatever it is, and do something. Even if it's just your time, do something right now. Why? For several reasons. One, you'll be happily achieving. 
Two, you'll be making the world a better place, which it needs right now. Right. And three, you're going to get the success faster. That's just the way God, the universe, whatever you believe works. It comes back a hundredfold. Trust me. Okay. So uh, pick something right now. And if you're not already and, and do it immediately. That's Ron. That's awesome. And, and in Thank fact, you. actually, actually, we recently created and released the Park Capital Partners Foundation. Uh, Love it. I'm, I'm not going to go into it right now, but it's but it's a it's about doing exactly that, giving back. And we we absolutely believe that you know we've we've been very blessed. Um, we're 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 conquering a lot of mountains ahead of us, but at the same point in time, we've been very blessed along the way. And part of that, what's important is to along that journey to success is to give back. We have two hands, one to pull ourselves up and one to pull the people up underneath us. And honestly, contribution is actually a basic human need. Anything in this universe that doesn't contribute is actually eliminated, okay, if you get right down to the science of it. But uh, no, I love it. And if you're listening and and you you were inspired by what I said, I I, I paid for it all up until 2008. In 2008, I fed, uh, it cost me 50 grand. I fed 1,500 families. And then, of course, my world collapsed. So I formed a foundation, started taking donations. Mm -hmm. Every dime goes to the food or the teddy bears or the backpacks. If you text tiny hands to seven, two, three, four, five, 22 bucks feeds a family. And so every bit helps. I appreciate it. Awesome. I fund everything the the operations and then some, you yeah. know, in fact, every, every boot camp ticket, I, I feed a family. So, you know, mm-hmm. um, uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's an important part of life. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's great, right? I mean, and we'll we'll also put links to the foundation in the show notes. Thank you. As well. Thank that's, you. Yeah. You know, very Thank worthy you. cause, and we are so happy to see you, you doing that. Thanks. And, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. called the Tiny Hands Foundation, mm-hmm. tinyhandsfoundation.org. And, and uh, it's a passion project. I want to do so much more. I've got a vision board here. Uh, I'll show you guys uh, that, uh, you know, I really want to do It's It's got pictures of um, Latin American children, and I want to build self sustaining schools in Latin America, um, you know, not just buy a school and set it up, but actually mm-hmm. create a, an economic infrastructure, like buy land and have an agricultural infrastructure or put I, IT in there so they can do tech stuff and mm-hmm. actually support the school and maybe even support the surrounding community. So that's something I've been threatening to do for a decade. But, um, you know, then when things slow down, I'm going to give that attention. So there you go. Rod, what, what advice would you give somebody who's looking to make a path change? <sighs> Listen, couple of things. Okay. Um, do my goal setting workshop. I'll tell you what, if you DM me on any social channel, you've got to be really clear on what you want. So you take action with it. That's number one. So if you DM me on any social channel on January 2nd of this year on my Rod Clee Facebook page, I did about an hour and a half presentation of goals and it includes this goal setting worksheet and, um, and, uh, music and everything else. And just, just DM me and say goals. And I'll send you the link to that and, and do it with your spouse, do it with, if your kids are 12 or older, do it with them as well, get them juiced up, but it starts with that. Then I would focus on something you might love. If you don't love real estate, I tell my students this, I say, you can associate pleasure with it and learn to love anything. Okay. Even exercise. If you associate pleasure with it, like I tell them, associate it to hunting for buried treasure because that's really what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But if you can't learn to love it, for God's sakes, go do something else. Life is too short. Now, if you don't, I would tell you, those of you listening, if you don't, it, it, don't be in the same place a year from now that you are right now, unless you absolutely freaking love where you are right now, make yeah. that change. Life right. is too short. This is not a dress rehearsal. So find something you love because when you love your, it, you're passionate about it. Obviously you can tell I'm passionate, you're passionate about it and you're going to need to influence people to raise money for whatever you're doing, to align with you, to work with you. And that passion makes people want to work with you, but you got, but that starts with loving it. So, so mm-hmm. again, love it, learn to love it or go do something else but the bottom line is go do it okay don't be in the same place you are a year from now unless you absolutely love it yeah absolutely Uh, that's great great advice well Ron, is there something you've uh, implemented as we wrap up here something you've implemented recently in your business that's helped you achieve your goals faster um you know, I'm always yeah. working on that stuff. Uh, yeah. I will tell you, uh, I mean, certainly there are te- technological things we use. Obviously, Zoom has been a game changer. It beats the hell out of Skype that we used to use. And uh, um, I, we use Asana for our project management to manage our deal flow. Slack for inner office communication is fantastic. Um, yeah, I'm not a big app person, although, you know, there, there are some incredible apps out there. I'm not a big app person, but uh, Maybe like um, a morning routine even or anything. Oh, yeah. I'll, t- I'll tell you a morning routine. Yes. 
So every morning I'll sit in this recliner my wife hates because <laughs> it's so ugly <laughs> by me here. And, and I will sit in there and I will do gratitude and I'll just be grateful for my, I mean, my wife is supermodel beautiful and she's more beautiful on the inside. We've been together 12 years and I'll do gratitude for her. I'll do gratitude for my kids. I'll do gratitude for my coaching students, my foundation, and just be grateful just for a couple minutes. And then I'll do gratitude. And this is going to, I'm going to lose some of you analytical ones on this, but I'll do gratitude for what I, what I want as if I already have it. And, and sometimes I've even gotten emotional being grateful for things I don't even have yet. I know you're going, Oh, good Lord. Well, it's how I had 50 million to lose and how I got back to where I am today by doing that foofy stuff because it freaking works. Okay. And that's how the universe works. It all hinges around gratitude. In fact, I've got my planner here in the back of this thing. I've got pictures of things that I've wanted for 20 years and the first pictures of gratitude. They're my pictures of my kids when I was very young mm-hmm. and I've got, you know, pictures of the houses that I wanted. I built that house on the beach. I lost it in all the craziness. Now I live in a compound and because God's got a sense of humor. I can see my old house right across the bay. It's literally <laughs> right across the bay. But the bottom pictures look just like the house that I live in now. In fact, you can see the white wall in both those pictures. Right. Mm-hmm. Look behind me. That's my backyard. See the white wall. Isn't that freaking crazy. This is 21 years, 22 years ago. Then I've got, you know, stupid shit like watches. I've got a few hundred thousand dollars worth of watches in here. These are things that I wanted. They probably don't, you know, Lamborghini. I, I got a lot of cars and the, I know this probably doesn't interest 90% of the people on the club, but I got this stuff because I had pictures and I manifested it. The rolls, the Bentley, all the stuff that I thought was important one time I got because I put these pictures around me. I do that gratitude morning exercise I just described. And that's how I got all this stuff. So that's actually how I got my wife as well. I manifested her. I know it sounds crazy, but I did. I clearly defined what I was looking for in a woman. The minute I met her, I knew it was her. So, wow. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Well, what's the best way for the listeners to be able to reach out and learn more about? What sure, sure, sure. No, that's thank you. Yeah. So I've got my podcast. I, mm-hmm. I, I think you'll enjoy that lifetime cash flow through real estate investing. Again, if you have any interest in this multifamily business, even if you're just going to invest passively, Come spend a couple of days with me and learn it. Why would you give your money to someone unless you have an understanding of what it is? And so, you know, again, text multifamily to 72345. I promise you'll be glad you came. Promise you, regardless of how you invest. Um, and use the code Rod Friend. Remember that to get half price and, and, and get the courses and all that stuff with it. Um, but then my website is rodcleaf.com, but nobody can spell my name. So if you go to real estate with Rod, it's a direct link to my website. There's all the books that I, a lot of the books that I've written are there, articles, videos, you know, you name it, it's all there. I also have the largest multifamily Facebook group in the world. There's 43,000 people in there. Social media is just incredible. Um, and and it's called, if you go to multifamilycommunity.com, it's a direct link to that Facebook group. And we don't allow any promotion there. Um, and, and it's just a place to educate, ask questions, learn, grow. And again, you want to be around people that lift you up. So again, that's multifamilycommunity.com. That's enough. <laughs> I can keep going. That's <laughs> enough. Anyway, we'll put we'll put links in the in the notes. Oh, thank show you. Notes. Appreciate yeah. it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Rob, we want to thank you for being on the Road Less Travel Show. We really appreciated the conversation. It's been great, and wish you continued success. Thank you, my friends. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Rod, thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. <clears throat> you bet. So, thank you. We also want to thank our audience. Thank you for listening. Please give us a five star rating so we can continue bringing you more great content like Rod Cleef today. And uh, please, we also want to thank our sponsors, Park Capital Partners. Also the Park Capital Value Add Fund, which is now out and available. And finally, the Park Capital Found- Park Capital Partners Foundation. Uh, thank you again, Rod, for being on. And remember folks, the road less traveled may be calling you. We recommend that you listen and take action. Thanks for joining. <laughs>